It's important that the press especially, but also that the public understand how SETI works and, and that SETI is always seeing strange and interesting things and take that as an opportunity to teach the press and teach the public about the process of SETI, that it's not just, oh, we found something. The, the key point is the follow-up, the ability to confirm that it really is a, uh, 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 an extraterrestrial signal. There is the famous wow signal, for instance, which was a very bright uh, or, or loud uh, radio signal detected, apparently, from space. Uh, and it was exactly what people were looking for in terms of signals from alien intelligence. Um, but it's never repeated. And so all we have is that one chart that showed that it arrived. In order for us to really get excited, it has to be something that others can study, something that repeats. You want to have multiple teams be independently able to detect the signal, to confirm that it's you know the same signal, that it's really coming from outer space, that it's definitely not man-made. I'm project scientist for a program called uh, NUID, which is a precise Doppler spectrograph on the Wind Telescope at Kitt Peak. This is a state-of-the-art instrument that is designed to detect, discover, planets, well, we hope like the Earth, low-mass planets, where the Earth is considered to be a low-mass planet, uh, around stars, uh, hopefully a lot like the Sun. I'm not a radio astronomer, but I think there are a lot of non-radio astronomy angles to SETI uh, that need to be looked at. Radio SETI, communication SETI, has to cast this impossibly wide net. Um, in many ways, we're sort of searching blind. So it would be nice if there were some way to help target the, the, the search, if there were some way to enrich the list of things that, you know, are anomalous. Stars that look like they might have some evidence of activity and check those out. And so as a stellar astronomer, that's something I have some expertise in, which stars seem to be behaving oddly, which stars might have show some anomalies or evidence that could be extraterrestrial intelligence. So the most common descriptions of how you might go about detecting this are that if you give an alien civilization enough time, uh, they might build very large structures. And the most obvious reason they might do that is to collect very large amounts of starlight. So if alien civilizations do build very large structures for collecting this energy, if those structures are the size of planets or even larger, or if they have swarms of stru structures that span that size, then there's two ways that that would be obvious from Earth. One is that they'd intercept that starlight to collect it, so it wouldn't come here to Earth. So we'd see the star get dimmer anytime the structures were between the Earth and the star. The second way is that you can't destroy energy. That's as fundamental a law of nature as we know. So when they collect all that energy, when they're done doing whatever they do with it, they have to get rid of it in a high entropy state. That is to say, they have to get rid of it as heat. They have to re-radiate away their, uh, their energy, probably at mid-infrared wavelengths. So we can look for stars that seem to have too much infrared energy coming off of them, as though something was blocking their light and re-emitting it it's possible that we'll find a particularly anomalous star or galaxy or group of stars, and it'll just continue to evade explanation. And we'll point our radio telescopes at it, and we won't necessarily detect any radio emissions, because maybe they're not beaming anything bright in our direction. Um, but the more we study the system, the more confused we'll get, and the more credible the extraterrestrial civilization hypothesis will get over time. Uh, and, uh, and who knows how long it'll take, but it'll be a really fun mystery to solve along the way.